Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a chemistry demonstration to share with you. We're using this book by Live Education. It is a Waldorf inspired curriculum and we're going to be doing a lesson on combustion. And today we're going to be working on this demonstration for the chemical process in the candle. So I have my candle here and I have three mason jars. I have the smallest here, which is a pint. I have the quart size, and then we have the half gallon size. And so today's project is going to be observing how the candle stays burning inside the jar for a period of time before it gets extinguished as a way to demonstrate how the fire needs the oxygen that's in the air in order to burn. The materials you're going to need for this demonstration are candles and jars of various sizes. Now it recommends that you use a paraffin candle rather than a beeswax candle. And these are the paraffin candles that we made a while ago, but I realized that they are not suitable for this project. So I have some of these candles from a craft store versus the beeswax candles that we typically use. So we can actually try this out and see how it is in comparison. But we're going to start by lighting this candle and then timing it to see how long it burns with our jar. We're gonna start with the smallest jar first, and that is the pint size jar. And so let's go ahead and observe how long this will burn. Okay, so we got to about 11 seconds for the pint jar. And now we're going to try it again with the quart. And the quart is twice as large as the pint. So we can also estimate how long we expect it to burn as well. Okay, and let's go ahead and try it with the quart. So we actually got to 30 seconds and we were expecting closer to about 22 seconds. So we're gonna try with the largest mason jar, which is a half gallon. And then we're going to try adding water to our dish in order to potentially make a better seal and see if that affects our times. And then we can also try it directly on the table rather than on this plate, which is slightly curved. So in doing this project, we're gonna try a few different methods before we try different candles as well. Let's go ahead with the largest mason jar. expecting maybe a minute or so based on how long it took for our for our court All right, so we got to 50 seconds with the half gallon mason jar. We're going to try another set. This time we're going to add a little bit of water to the jar 
or to the plate. And hopefully this makes a bit of a seal for us. So let's start with the pint size first. Okay. That took seven seconds and you can see that the water level slowly went up, but then finally rested at this point once the fire was extinguished. And now we can let it out. Okay, so we got roughly the same amount of time. Let's go ahead and try our quart. I'm going to add a bit more water. Oops, we gotta do that one again. Okay, we're ready for the quart size and we're expecting at least 14 seconds. I think you can already see the water rising up. Then 15 seconds. All right, so just about 20 seconds. And then after the fire is completely extinguished, that's when you see the most water rise up. Okay, let's reset and try the next one. Make sure there's no water in our candle. Then we can do the next one. So we did see a decrease of about 10 seconds when we used the method of sealing the dish with some water. And this previously, the large one, the half gallon was 50 seconds. And our quart size, was about 20 seconds. And so now let's see what this one ends up being. Ten seconds. Twenty. Thirty. You can see the water rising. Forty. Forty-eight. 49. Okay. So go ahead and release that. Now we're going to do the whole thing again and this time directly on the table. And let's just see how the seal is when it's just directly on a flat surface. Just going to wipe up some of this water. Let's try that again. So let's start with our pint size.
All right, so that was just about eight seconds. So we're doing pretty consistent with the pint size jar at around seven to eight, actually seven seconds with the water, eight seconds on the table and 11 seconds the first time around. So we have a few seconds of discrepancy, but let's move on to the court. The court, we had the most discrepancy in time from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. But with our half gallon, we ended up being pretty consistent at around 48 to 50 seconds. So let's see how this plays out. Okay, let's begin. Fifteen seconds, twenty. Okay, we had about twenty four, twenty four seconds. Okay, and let's try our last one the half, half gallon. So we've had about 48 to 50 seconds with this one. So let's see how this one works. 10 seconds. 20. Forty. Fifty. Okay, about fifty four to fifty five seconds. Next, we're going to do a tea light and then also a beeswax tea light and see if we get different. Uh, durations of burning. Okay, so let's start with this one. So we can expect about 20 seconds. 10 seconds. 20 seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay, about thirty four seconds with that one. Okay, now let's let that air out a little bit. We're going to try the beeswax candle. So, this is a mixture of beeswax and coconut oil. Fifteen seconds. Well, that's burning a lot longer. Okay, we're almost up to 40 seconds, 
So that's about twice as long with this kind of candle. Now it's time to include this demonstration into our main lesson book. While I'm writing this up directly after the demonstration, my daughter is actually going to do this a day after we did this demonstration. So at this time, I'm going to write up a sample of what she might include in her main lesson book. I'm going to do a really small illustration with each of those jars and I decide that I actually want them to be to scale. And so I'm going to use my ruler in order to measure the jar, both the mouth of the jar as well as the height of the jar. And then I'm just dividing that by four. I'm using centimeters, dividing it by four so I can get a to scale model in the main lesson book. What I didn't take into account was the width of the jar, not just the mouth of the jar. And so once I get to the half gallon size, I realize that there's something that looks incorrect about the illustration. So I sort of fix that, but I don't really fix it for the court. Now this ends up being optional. You don't need to do this, but as this is a scientific demonstration, I wanted to be as accurate even with our illustration. So once I got that done, I labeled them all. And then I added a little candle on the inside and it looked kind of simple. So I decided to come back with color pencils and add the flame in color. And then I go back and I include a little bit of color pencil to outline the entire jar and to sort of make it look a little bit thicker rather than so thin because the pencil was quite thin uh, compared to the color pencil. And then I also relabel them all. So I have this little space for data on the side of my illustration because originally I thought the illustration would take up the entire top half of this page, but now I've got room for my data and my illustration, and then I can put the rest of the information below. So I'm going to write this up a little bit like a scientific experiment, even though this was more of a demonstration. But since we did have different sized jars, you could imagine that you could hypothesize that the larger jars would allow the flame to burn longer. And then I imagine that it would take about twice as long since the jar was twice as big and our data did not show that. However, we did not take enough data points in order to really evaluate that. And then we went ahead and wrote the materials and the procedures, observation and conclusion. Even though I don't intend to do every demonstration this way, I went ahead and did this for the first one, even though we did not follow the scientific method to do this demonstration. So this was the very first demonstration for our chemistry main lesson block. Even though we have done other lessons in preparation for this lesson, this was our very first demonstration and it went okay. However, there are some things that I realize are going to be a bit of a challenge just for this main lesson block and just for my student who is quite afraid of combustion. So we're taking this very slow and very safely so that she feels safe in doing these demonstrations. I hope you enjoyed this look at our chemistry demonstration for combustion. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you can find more information on this main lesson block as well as links to all of the resources that we're using. You can find the link to that blog post in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram and now on TikTok at Pepper and Pine.